Hi, welcome to the OCR 21st Century Science Revision Lessons. Um, this is uh, Unit P4, Explaining Motion. This is Lesson 3, and it's all about friction. Now, we're going to look at the causes of friction, and we're going to look at friction as what we call a responsive force. So, what causes friction? Well, if you examine a surface, however smooth that surface may appear to be, so a sheet of glass, or a kitchen worktop, or a table, if you actually look at it under a microscope, what you find is however smooth it might be, it's actually covered in lots of ripples and bumps. Now when you put another material on top of that, and attempt to slide it, then that surface, which is also rough, will interact with the lumps and bumps on this surface. Now if we zoom in on one particular part, what we see is that we might have one big lump from the bottom and from the top surface another big lump. Now then, if I'm trying to move this red object to the right by pulling it, or I'm trying to push it that way, then you can see that what I've got here is I've got a series of of hills and valleys. So when I pull that along, this surface here is going to drop into this valley. It might move there quite easily. But then, once it gets to that position, and I want to move it further, I've got to push it over that hill. So those lumps and bumps will interact and snag on each other. And it's this snagging force that causes friction. Okay, So friction is caused by microscopic bumps or microscopic roughness and it's the snagging of these lumps and bumps from the object you're moving and the surface which causes friction to occur. You imagine trying to move that it might drop into here and then when I pull on this side I'm actually pulling this in order to lift it over the top of the next bump uh, and that scraping together or locking together is going to cause my, my resistance, uh, my friction force. Okay, so that's what causes friction. Now friction is what's known as a responsive force. So if I try to push my box or pull my box along my surface, then this is what happens. So here's my box. Now if I apply a force of say 20 newtons, I might find that the size of the friction force will be exactly the same as that, 20 newtons, and the object won't move, the forces are balanced. So I could always up my force to something slightly bigger. Now the thing about friction is, friction will also increase as well. So let's imagine I apply a force now of 40 newtons. Then the friction will also increase, Notice I'm drawing the friction arrow between the surfaces. That will also increase to 40 newtons, and still my object doesn't move. So I can apply myself a much bigger force, let's say 100 newtons, and then when I apply a force of 100 newtons, that force is big enough to overcome the maximum friction that this box can create. So let's say that I overcome the friction force, so this force will be less than 100. So just to re recap, friction force will be matching and that still won't be moving, so still or stationary. So I increase my force, but that's still not big enough to overcome the, the friction force so it's stationary again. It's only when I apply a force that's big enough to overcome the maximum force that the object starts to move. Now in this situation, if we've got 100 newtons here and less than 100 newtons here, let's say for example it's 70 newtons, my maximum friction force, then I'll have a resultant force, i.e. the forward force will be bigger by 30 newtons a 
and because of that the object will start to accelerate in this direction because I've got an unbalanced force. Well we'll come on to balance and unbalanced forces in a bit. So quick recap, friction is caused by microscopic bumps and those bumps snagging on each other from the object that's trying to move and the surface is what leads to the resistance. Now friction always acts against the way that it's trying to be moved. And it's a responsive force in as much as it can change up to a maximum value, let's say the maximum in this case was 70 newtons. So if I apply a force that's less than the maximum, I get an equal um, friction force and the object doesn't move. If I up my force a bit further, I still am matched by friction and I'm not moving. Only when I overcome the maximum frictional force that then the object will have a resultant force in the direction I want to go and it will start to accelerate or start to speed up and move in that direction. Okay, thanks very much. Next lesson is all about reaction forces.